Hello there. My name is Anastasios and I'm a student of the Living Writers course offered at San Diego State University. For those of you who have followed the program these last few months, you may have witnessed a reading by Stephen Paul Martin, during which he shared his work, The Phantom Zone, a fictional telling of a Trump rally taken to absurd lengths. The piece itself is certainly highly critical of our president, something which you may or may not find objectionable, depending upon your own political views. I will confess now that when I initially read the first pages, I mistakenly assumed that the story would be little more than a lazy and preachy attack on a politician the author did not like. However, the opinions of Professor Martin are not something we will concern ourselves with today, for the true value can be found in his approach to writing about the ever-divisive issue of politics. Now, generally speaking, there is a good way to write pieces that are political in nature. If done well, they are capable of uplifting the writer's own viewpoints while effectively critiquing that of his opponents without it coming across as a blatantly one-sided attack. Of course, if it is done poorly, as it all too often is, it will simply result in the critiques being thrown aside immediately. A number of things can factor into this outcome, but perhaps the most common one is straw manning. Essentially, it amounts to attacking a caricature of the opposition or their arguments rather than the reality of them. In some ways, it doesn't make sense. After all, why confront the highly nuanced reality of an opposing argument when you can turn it into a parody of itself? If you are a Democrat, for example, you might paint conservatives as ignorant hicks at best, or open fascists at worst. If you are a Republican, you might portray leftists as socialists, or maybe reptilians, depending on your opinion on that day. Whatever the case, it is a crude and dishonest strategy with an absurdity that is more than likely to drive people away from you. But what if you embraced the absurdity? Or rather than trying to make a well-reasoned argument, what if you instead turned everything up to 11 and rolled with the chaos? I am talking about exaggerating your most hated politician and taking his opinions to their illogical conclusions, having him act in ways that go a step beyond parody. Such was the path Professor Martin chose for his story. The Phantom Zone is not a highbrow, nuanced critique of President Trump, and that is probably because it does not want to be. Trump's mannerisms and speech are inflated well past reality, while his supporters are played as buffoons that embody all the negative perceptions their detractors hold of them. And despite all of this, it works. Why is that? There are two major reasons. First off, when things are inflated to such a degree, it all becomes impossible to take seriously. As I mentioned earlier, I myself thought that this would be a childish hit, hit piece and on my first read, and I nearly did disregard it out of hand just for that. But when I saw that it was not meant to be taken seriously, I remembered that I had a sense of humor and I was able to enjoy it for what it was in the aftermath. The second reason is that Mr. Martin is not afraid to throw some critique his own way to help balance things a little. Of course, this is nowhere close to being a both sides are equally good sort of cliche, but it does demonstrate to some degree that everyone and everything is fair game, that it is not just one side serving as a punching bag. These two things are perhaps the greatest lessons you can learn from the Phantom Zone, at least in regards to making your own politically charged piece. And of course, you can use this basic approach no matter your target. Perhaps Mitch McConnell with his turtle-like appearance takes precedence over Trump on your list of intolerable politicians. Or maybe it is in fact a Democrat that has earned your ire. For those of you who think that Kamala Harris's laugh serves as a harbinger of the end times, you may just use these same techniques in a different political direction. Whatever the case, these methods are ready and waiting for you should you need them. There will always be a demand for carefully written and realistic critiques of opposing viewpoints. But if you wish to go over the top with it all, now you know how to do it.